In this lesson, we'll configure Nginx to run your application under a production-like environment. Nginx is supposed to serve your assets without resorting to the Rails app to do so. All of the CSS, images, and JavaScript files go from Nginx, and the logic of the application goes straight through Rails. Bear with me as this might be a little complicated. If you have any questions, be sure to hit Twitter or the forums. So with that being said, let's jump in and open the browser. Let's search for fusionpassenger.com. Fusion Passenger is the Ruby library that allows you to coordinate your Rails application with Nginx. We're just going to hit download here. We're going to select the open source version for now. The enterprise version contains some nifty features. We're not gonna need them for now. Let's click on install now and select Ubuntu. When you choose Ubuntu, you still have an option that you can choose from. In this case, we want to integrate with Nginx, so I'll click Continue on Nginx. This is going to point out to the documentation on how to install this. As I've mentioned, this is key to making your Rails app work with Nginx. So what we need to do is we need to type in this to the command line. Let's follow this step by step. I'm going to copy this and go to the terminal. Inside it, I'm going to paste in the contents of the clipboard. I'll press enter, type in the password, and there you go. I already had that key added, so that's why you see unchanged one. Still, if you're doing this for the first time, you should be having a change or something like that. Let's move on to the next step. We should add in these packages from the official repositories. Copy that instruction and head over to the terminal once again and paste that instruction. Most likely you will have these packages already installed and upgraded. If you don't, then it will just install them as usual. Let's jump in to the browser again, and this time we're going to have to edit a system file. We're gonna to have to edit this particular file and add in this option. Pay close attention to these instructions, as this can be a little complicated. It says that we should create this file and insert one of these lines. Since we are using Ubuntu 13.10, we should add in this repository. I'm going to copy this line and only this one. I'm going to the terminal and I'm going to type in sudo nano and I'm going to open Etsy, then apt, then sources.list.d and finally passenger.list. I already have that file, so I'm just going to open it to show you how it should look like. Nano is a standard editor for the shell. You can use that or either Vim or Emacs. It doesn't really matter. All you need to do is paste in that instruction into the file. You can see that it's already there, so I'll just type in Control X and it should be good to go. It is going to ask you to save the changes, so it is going to ask you and you just type in yes. Okay, now that's set up, Let's go ahead and move on to the next step in the documentation. This is for the enterprise version. We don't need to do that. Let's do these instructions in order to make this file owned by the administrator and make it so no one can access it, only the root. So I'm just going to copy all of these instructions all at once, copy, go to the terminal and paste them. Okay, I'm just going to press enter for the final instruction and everything will be updated. This will allow us to install the very latest package for Fusion and Nginx. Okay, that's done. Let's move on to the next step. We need to install some packages. It's the next point in the documentation. It says that we should add the apt repository. We already did that. Let's copy this instruction to install Nginx extras and passenger. I'm going to copy the instruction and paste it in the terminal. Pressing enter, it will ask me to install these two packages and all of the dependencies, including the full installation of Nginx. I already had them, so this won't be necessary. So far, so good. Let's move on to the next step. We should edit this file that regards Nginx configuration, and we should uncomment these two options available in that file. I'm going to go to the terminal and type in sudo nano and then etsy nginx 
then nginx.conf. Okay, this is the file. I'm gonna go further down below. Let's see if there's a command to find something. I'm gonna type in control G and let's see if I have any help to search a particular key. Oh yes, there it is. You can see that we can search for a string or a regular expression. I'm gonna exit the help and type in control W. I can search for passenger and press enter. There you go. We have the Fusion passenger configurations. This is going to be commented out. You just need to remove the pound signs right before. This line is just like that. And I've changed this to be the location of our Ruby environment. This will depend on whether you're using RBMV, RVM, or CHRuby. In this case, RBM uses slash shims slash Ruby under the .rbm folder. So I'm just going to keep it like that. If you want to know where Ruby is located, you can print out the command that I'm going to paste right next. Right now, let me just exit the editor and now I can type in which Ruby. If you type in something like this, it will give you the location of your Ruby installation. When you do Ruby like this in the command line, it will provide you this exact path. This is the binary being called. So if I type in ruby-v, this command is invoked, and this is the final result. So now you know which version you should put in that configuration file for nginx. Let's move on to the next step. Let's see, jump right down below. This is for installations on Red Hat. This is not important. We should just deploy a new application by jumping into the 4.1 chapter. It's really down below. Just type in the command F key and 4.1 dot. You should just jump straight into this topic. This is all about creating different application files and folders like it were a new application. We want to focus straight on this configuration right here. We're going to need to copy this configuration straight into a file. This file will then be read by Nginx and we will have our application running. So I'm just going to copy this whole piece of code and I'm going to show you that it's not exactly as you see in the file. I'm going to make some changes. So I'm gonna go and open our text editor and go to config and create a new file in there. I'm gonna call it nginx.conf and it's going to have the contents of this snippet of code but I'm going to make some changes like I said so. I'm going to remove the HTTP header and I'm just going to add in the configurations for the server. The server will respond to port 80. It's not gonna have exactly a name, so I'm just going to remove that. It's not necessary. We're gonna say that this is the default server and the root of the application should be slash home slash Jose slash projects slash store. Oh, slash public too. This is the root location of our server. Every single request should be pointing out here. And if the route doesn't match anything in the file system, then it should point out to the Rails application. The assets are going to be put into this folder, and that's why it will be possible to you to render JavaScripts, images, and CSS files directly in here. So I'm just going to save this file and I'm going to type something like nginx.conf. Okay, there you go. I'm going to close this one. And now we need to make this file available under nginx. And for that reason, I'm going to use what is called a symbolic link. It works as a shortcut or much rather like a mirror. Let me just type in sudo ln-s. ln-s allows you to create a symbolic link. Without dash s, you will create a hard link. It will copy everything into the location. That's really not necessary. You can just create a soft link. So sudo ln s, we want to copy slash home slash Jose projects store and then config slash nginx.conf. So we'll make a mirror of this file into slash Etsy nginx sites enabled and then we're going to create a new file called nginx. Or rather, Rails store seems to be much more like it. The file already exists because I've created it in the background. So 
So with that being said, we can just go ahead and type in sudo service nginx restart. This command allows you to restart the full nginx server. It will take our new configurations correctly and take them into account when rebooting. It's going to restart nginx and there you go. Oh, there's one last thing that you need to do. If we take a close look to slash etsy nginx sites enabled, you will have two files, your own real store and then default. I'm going to type in sudo nano and then etsy nginx sites enabled default and we're going to edit this file. I have commented out this option here. You can see there's a directive for server that listens to port 80, the default one, and it has loads of different configurations. You should comment these out by placing a pound after each different line in the server directive. So everything from here to there should be commented out, or rather here. Just follow the bracket from top to bottom and comment or rather delete it all. I really don't advise you to delete that because it contains useful information that you might need to use later on for another project who might know. So comment it out and exit the file. Don't forget to save. After that, restart the server and you should be ready to go. The last thing that we need to do is configure our application to have all of our assets pre-compiled and run the server in production. I'm going to go to our editor and first do something about the database. After all, we're going to be using a production environment and so just to be simpler, I'm going to use our development database. I'm going to add in a reference called development and the production environment will have all the settings inside the development. This is the pointer to this tag. You can think of it that way. Okay, now that's taken care of, let's go to the terminal once again. And this time I'm going to type in rails env equals production, rake assets colon precompile. We're going to set the production environment with the rails env variable and we're going to call this rake task. This will use all gems available in the production environment and precompile all of our JavaScripts, CSS, and images into their respective single files. Type in enter, oh, we should go to CD projects store and call that function. Let's press enter and you should see two files, the application.js file and the application.css file. There you go, we have the JS file and CSS. Now we don't need to do anything else. If everything goes okay, we should be able to run localhost in the browser with no port and this should go straight to our application. Let's see if it works. And there you go, it works. It's even using Postgres and everything because you can see that the database contains only one tomato. So that's absolutely great. We are now using Nginx that serves the assets. You can actually go to control U and you can see this file, which contains everything. And you can also go to the JS file right down below. And this is the entire JavaScript code for your app. So congratulations on using Nginx, Postgres and Rails on a production like environment under Linux. There are many more things that you can learn on Linux, but this is the very basics on how to boot your application. You can now use a VPS or something like that to boot your own application at home or in a VPS. You now have the necessary tools to do so. In the next lesson, we'll push our code to GitHub and I'm going to introduce to SSH keys and how to install that in order to push your code through Linux. See you soon.